you have blessings probably for enough for uh, 10 people. Isn't that the truth? Uh, it is, but I wouldn't be the, the guy that I am today. I feel like the obstacles and everything I had to go through to get to where I am that made me who I am, I wouldn't change any of it. Like every good country song, there's life, there's love, and there's heartache. Jimmy Butler's story starts in Tiny Tomball, a town of about 10,000, just 40 miles outside of Houston. True or false, Jimmy Butler, NBA Cowboy. There it is. There it is. True. And the belt buckle. And the belt buckle. Texas forever. Texas, you know it. That's where I'm from. He's always loved the heat of competition, but the heat in Texas is another story. As a kid, Butler's passion changed from one sport to the next. Truthfully, first I started off playing football, but I stopped whenever I was like in sixth, seventh grade. So I was always a big football fan. You know, being from Texas, football's baseball is big. I think basketball made me third. Um, but then I wasn't a fan of the sun, I wasn't a fan of the heat. Plus, I was tiny. I was like five, like five three. Everybody else started growing. I was like, I don't want to get crushed. I'm going to move inside to the AC, shoot at the orange rim. And that's when, like, the love of basketball came along. At home, life wasn't that simple, mostly because at times there wasn't one. By 13, Jimmy was out on his own, bouncing from couch to couch until the summer before his senior year in high school when he met a freshman named Jordan Leslie. He doesn't open up too much, but I mean, you kind of get the gist of it. And I mean, I was always like, man, you can stay, stay tonight. I, my mom won't care. And then I'd just be like, oh, just one more night. And it just kind of developed into a week and then a month. For Jimmy, the transition was both cautious and quiet. He hid from us. <laughs> He stayed upstairs and we'd come downstairs and send Jordan down to get him food. So I guess he thought if he wasn't seen, no one would know he was there. <laughs> I felt like, like if, if nobody knew I was there, they couldn't get tired of me. He never left. A house became a home. Friends became family. And with their love and support, Jimmy started to flourish on and off the court. It is hard because, you know, people say you just take a child you don't even know. And you know, and people think different things and say different things. And, and not, not to say that someone didn't come to me and say, oh, don't let him in. He, that he's supposedly he's done this. You've got to go with your gut. He's brought more to us than ever we could bring to him. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. I did pretty good for a long time. <laughs> That's them. That's family. That's what that is. And, you know, people say, oh, that's that's not blood. Well, I feel like family is who you love, you know, who you always want to be around, who's there for you with your holidays, who's there um, for your first game, for your first start, you know, things like that. And if you were to ask me those questions, they were always there. And I have nothing against anybody else, but I know whenever you ask me my family, you'll get those names, you'll get those people. As he also keeps in close contact with some of his blood relatives, especially his older brother and sister. Meanwhile, basketball was no longer just an outlet. After starring at Tomball High, Butler landed at Tyler Junior College, where then Marquette assistant coach Buzz Williams saw him while recruiting another player. He watched me play. The very first thing he said to me was, Jimmy, you suck. I was like, oh, I don't even know you. Like, I don't. You know, like, I'm a kid, I'm just like, that's cool. But Jimmy's relentless game started to grow on Williams. And when he became the head coach at Marquette, he called Butler at 2 a.m. to offer him a scholarship. Then Jimmy faced his next challenge. And I thought that he would potentially end up being the difference maker, which is why he wanted to go home, because I was extremely difficult in coaching him because I thought that he could evolve into being a guy towards the end of the year that could help us. Like I was always like, I, I want to come home. I want to transfer. Like, because he was so hard on me. Like, I was so far away from home, you know, homesick. I'm still a kid. Eventually, the tough love would turn to motivation. Thriving by his senior season, Jimmy caught the eye of the Bulls. With the 30th pick in the 2011 draft, the Chicago Bulls select Jimmy Butler from Marquette University. 
like I instantly burst out into tears with, with my mom because I just felt like all the hard work that I've done, like all the people that tell me that I wouldn't amount to anything, that I couldn't be an NBA player, that I, I wouldn't get my degree, I wouldn't go to college, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. But more than anything, it was, I proved myself right. I could, I could care less about proving them wrong. I wanted to prove to myself that if I said I could do it, I put my mind to it, and I did it. He waited for his chances to play during his rookie season while working on his game and finding another family in the Bulls organization. The bond that we have, it's, it's one of a kind. Like everybody wants to be around each other. You know, we see each other so much every day on the court that you think when we have a chance to be away from each other, you want to get away from each other, but that's not the case. Everybody has you know, their families to attend to, but I feel like um, when we do have the chance, we all want to do something together, even if that's go to a movie or, or go get dinner or just hang out in somebody's room on the road. I feel like that's a big part of team success because we know each other not only um, on the court but off the court. And we know when you know somebody's down or when somebody's really happy. Like I think that's a big part of um, being more than just a basketball player, but being a great person, great teammate, and um, just knowing your guys well. You know, the organization is, is amazing. Uh, the players are amazing where you see, you know, you see some teams that have different players and they kind of get in trouble. And, you know, you just don't see this from this team. And this coach, you just don't, you know, he doesn't put up with that. So, you know, that makes you feel good. And with injuries piling up this season, it opened up more opportunities for number 21. Like every other adversity in his life, Jimmy Butler is meeting the challenge and showing the NBA that his future is bright. You can't say enough about uh, how he made the team function well. And everything he did was uh, move towards winning. It says a lot. It, it's also who he is. You know, he just, he just wants to win. I feel like um, we always talk about it and with my teammates, with my coaches, that the more reps that you get, that's the more confidence you gain. One of the two, there's the... Oh, stop it! Stop it! Jimmy Butler goes upstairs! Your, your chance is going to come. <laughs> Even down in Texas, his family stays close by. They try to make trips up to see him every month during the season, and the bond is unbreakable. I mean, I know he feels that he's blessed, but I mean, we're just as blessed. I mean, someone that's gone through so much and can still smile every day. I mean, he might he might be a jerk sometimes and stuff like that, but I mean, loving, we all know. Loving he, all the time. We all know he loves us, and I mean, I feel blessed to have him in my life. It's been a winding road from Tomball, Texas to the Windy City. There's been adversity and life lessons along the way. Jimmy Butler is ready for the next challenge with plenty of support. Considering your, your early childhood, how fortunate do you feel to have that, you know, happen in your life? It's, it's a blessing, you know, to have people that are, that are always in your corner, no matter what, to always be on your side. If you need anything, they're, they're willing to give you. That's the, you know, the last penny that they have to the shoulder on their back. I think uh, a lot of people would like to have that. And you know, having people in your corner like that, that, that just lets you know that you can be successful, that no matter what happens, you know, if you fail or if you succeed, they're always gonna have your back. They're always gonna look at you as the same person that look here from Tomball who was ripping and running with the snotty nose.